I had a very interesting question asked of me on YouTube. The person said, where are you in all these videos? Interesting question. Well, I'm the guy waggling the brush around. And for those of you who want to see me, apart from my right shoulder, that's me. Welcome to my video. One of the other things people ask me is, what's my studio like? Well, that's my, uh, well, obviously, well, it's a table. And that's where I keep my brushes, uh, paints, all kinds of stuff. This, um, this big bottle here, this, is, this will answer a few questions. This is how I clean my brushes. I just use detergent. I put the brushes in a container like that. I massage them uh, with the detergent, leave them for a bit, and then I take them off and rinse them. Um, this is a painting I'm going to be sending to one of my followers soon. And um, that's Bob. Bob is my plant. Okay, now the lighting. Okay, this is my lighting. Sometimes I use just a plain old light bulb, like that. Um, but I do have this thing, which is a, an LED light. Uh, it's adjustable. It'll go almost up to the ceiling up there and um, you can actually tune the color to add uh, a bit of yellow to it or make the color cooler so that's done by uh, these buttons here on the back there's two buttons there and you just dial it to uh, choose how you want the color to go so let me see if i can actually do that so i'm going to turn one of them to uh, add more yellow and to then add more white or take the yellow right off that gives you this or I can tone down the uh, color completely um, this is uh, that's the other end of the room so I got a, a painting up there drying off um, that one I'll be finishing soon one that I never seem to get around to finishing uh, which is normal for me um, and this is where I design my books. As you can see, it's a mess. So, um, but that's the way of artists, I think. We tend to be a little bit untidy. And uh, I have two of these easels. These are excellent easels. I highly recommend them. I won't tell you the maker's name or anything, but uh, they are exceptionally good. And um, this painting here is on, on an easel exactly the same. It's a great big painting, this on a piece of plywood. Unfortunately, it was cheap plywood and um, I had to stop painting that end because some of the plywood actually uh, uh, peeled off. So I'm going to saw down that end and lose the last, uh, what, three to four inches where you can see that light bit of blue. And uh, so there we are. Now today I'm going to be working on this painting. So this one is, I think it's a painting I did as a demo while I was teaching somebody. I've uh, never been happy with the picture and I think it's probably because the horizon is too near the middle. So I'm, I'm going to lower the horizon and I'm also going to try and make the landscape look a little bit more interesting. This, you have to bear in mind, this was done probably um, under an hour just just to let them know that uh, anything you do is fixable, nothing is set in stone, and you can always change a picture. Uh, so sometimes, though, it's better to just let the picture dry first, then then make your changes. And uh, we'll see how this one goes. Anyway, this is what it'll look like when it's finished, so stick around. And of course, while I'm painting, the cat will be paying attention. Not necessarily to me, but to something out the window. Sap green and phalo blue. Interesting colour, phalo blue. Some people ask me, what is the chemical makeup of these colours? Um, well, I can tell you. Phalo blue, when I scratch the back of the tube, is PB15 
three, I think. It's got paint all over it. And sap green is something else. Okay, the numbers on sap green are PY42 and then PR101 and then PG7. So I'm sure that means something to someone. Uh, it doesn't mean much to me because I just don't pay attention to that sort of thing. I, I either like the colour or I don't. I don't care what um, the chemical makeup is because uh, life's too short. So, not using a lot of paint, um, that's the amount of phthalo blue that I'll use. And this is the amount of sap green. I will probably add a little bit of uh, alkyd to this. Sometimes I forget when I'm painting, by the way, and I say, oh, I'm going to add more liquid. It's not, it's not liquid. Liquid and alkyd are slightly different. Again, if you Google it, you'll see that um, there is uh, something in one that isn't in the other. Um, no idea. Does it actually say on the bottle? Hmm. It says it in... No, it doesn't. I thought it said it in Italian, but I'm wrong. Okay, so nice gob of alkyd. And the brush that I'm going to use for that uh, will be another cheapie. Uh, let me think, which one should we use? Okay, this will be interesting. This is um, this is a French decorating brush. Okay, nice big brush. I've had this one quite a few years. Quite soft. I think it's beyond any hairs coming out. And uh, it's just uh, got a nice weight to it. So uh, let's see how that does. So I'm going to just get some blue and green, bit of alkyd, bit of blue, bit of green, and then see what happens. That's what I like about painting. There's, a, there's, a, there's a quite a lot of that in my painting. Let's do it and see what happens. Okay, so I'm just going to make a mountain. Let's just see how that looks. Let's just see what the colour looks like on there. Interesting. A little bit too powerful so I'm going to put in uh, more green less blue and a bit more a bit more alkyd okay so let's just make a hill let's just see what happens when we do that let's just play and have fun okay so there we go so there's the first stage of some mountains not difficult actually I'm I, I, I might have a change of mind on the brush, I'm not sure yet. It's, uh, it's okay for laying the colour on, but I do, like, I do like my flat brushes quite a lot. And this one is okay, it's just not doing exactly what I want for this job. So let's just pull that across there and then put in some shapes. Just to see what happens. Yeah, it's going the right way, I suppose. And then a bit of solid green there, just to give that a bit more form. I think we'll just pull that a little closer to us. Strengthen that up a bit, strengthen this up a bit. Actually that might go away, I'm not sure yet, we'll see. A few darker shapes over there. As you can see, I am I'm possibly going to completely change the painting. And how is that looking? Okay. Now, I think the mountain should be higher, so I'm going to just go for it here. I'm just going to go up to about that that level. How does that feel? Nice balance up to the sky, and then down here, a few bumps in it. Always remember, details that are a long way from you are blobs and bumps. Don't try to paint a tree. You have to remember what you're doing is pushing paint around you're not pushing leaves around okay talking of around I'm just going to wander around the studio here and find another brush um, that's a good one I think okay now this brush um, I'm going to just use with nothing on it it's just plain old brush 
Okay, so I'm just going to push this around the top edge over here. I'll try and do some zooming in as I work. Uh, you can do that without moving the camera, I found, uh, using the editor that I'm, I've got, which is a really good video editor. If, you're into, if you want to make videos like this, I, I can say, and I, I must mention, I don't get paid for any recommendations that I might give you. It's called Filmora. It's made by Wondershare. I'll put the link in the box below. Um, and it is the easiest uh, video editor that I could find. I've had several um, that I looked at. And quite frankly, some of them made me think that, well, if I get through this, I will probably qualify to be an astronaut because they are so uh, complicated. And they also use language which might mean something to someone who's an experienced uh, video editor, but to me, um, I'm not reasonably tech savvy. I have to be because of my uh, book design work, which is all done. I, I've actually used computers since since they were born. I think um, over thirty years now, and uh, I use things like um, Photoshop regularly for illustrations that go in the books. So I'm reasonably reasonably au fait with it. I'm just going to try and do a few shapes here because I'm not happy with this. I might I might even darken that right down there. Just a nice dark greeny colour. Um, what I'm trying to do is um, I'm trying to simplify. One of the things that uh, you'll find most artists want to do once they once they start to uh, without me being rude to other painters once you start to understand paint you realize that um, for this type of painting you don't have to worry about detail it's it's all about uh, the feeling and the illusion that you are giving people that something is going on without painting the something so uh, I may have mentioned this in other videos, but if you want to paint in this style or a similar style, it's worth going on the internet and looking up uh, the American tonalists, people like George Innes and Bruce Crane, to, to mention a couple, um, just to see what they did. Um, and you don't have to copy them, although copying is, is not a bad way of learning stuff. But don't, don't try to be Bruce Kane or don't try to be me even. Just uh, uh, what I'm trying to do is teach the technique and also teach you to, as I always say, relax. When you relax, magical things start to happen uh, because you take away the stress. I'm going to darken all of these trees here. I might, I might put a few highlights in them later, but I just want to get, as I said, I'm after a feeling, not a detail. And if you do this enough, eventually you'll get good at it to the point where you can, you can actually convince people that you've spent hours on it. And in fact, you've only spent minutes. I don't like the fact that they look like two repetitive, they look like three now, uh, blobs. I just, want, I just want a shape here, so I'm going to get rid of that break in the tone. I'll work on that again in a minute. So, I don't know whether you can see, but now it's starting to, um, it's starting to simplify. And by doing that, it will actually push attention, well, it will bring attention to this, but it also will give the sky more impact. Uh, let me see what should I do next. Okay, so I've got I've got my distance showing quite well in here. Nice bit of perspective there. So I'm going to eventually I'll work on the sky and bring it more over our heads. But I'm going to I'm going to try and simplify down here, and I'm going to try to um, get a few little light spots through there. But before I do that, I want to do my dark. Always do your darks before you do your lights. Then you um you won't end up with mud. 
Okay, so I've got this is this is okay here. I think possibly a little bit more. A little bit more there. A few little textures in there. And um, okay, I'm gonna do a little bit more darkness down there. And that little bush at the bottom here is looking a bit lost. So I think I will simplify that. I might even break this. You see, I've got like a path coming here. I might break the path a little bit. I don't want to break it too much because I want it to not lose its identity. It's still got to look like a path. But I want people to follow it into the picture. Once I've got them in here, I want them to then meander over that way. I'm going to bring that right off the bottom down there. I think you can see the whole thing. Yeah, good. I'm going to darken right down, making, you see here, because the paint is dry underneath, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving some of it showing through, putting dark spots on the top, and eventually I'll do some light spots on the top. But at the moment I want, I want interesting texture. And I think by now, if I just sort of do that, you can see that the dark is hitting your retina before the light, so it brings that closer to you. I hope that makes sense. I don't always make sense. So here now, we've got this lonely little tree. I might keep it, uh, but, however, I will darken... Uh, the land just below it and that will connect it to the ground a little bit more it was hovering a bit so in, well, one thing I don't want and I've always tried to avoid is hovering trees and uh, you'll believe how many cat hairs I get on the edges of my paintings you know if you ever buy one of my paintings you don't just get a painting you get you get about 4% cat with it Okay, so again, more, you see, because I'm just touching the brush here, this side of the brush, along the edge here, uh, sorry, the facing edge, just by touching the painting with it, down here, um, you can see, I hope, I will do my best to zoom in on that, you'll be able to see that it makes, uh, it makes grass, so just a few touches around the bottom of the tree, like so, just let it wobble a bit and you'll get all kinds of interesting stuff happening. If it doesn't work, all you have to do is take it off because it won't affect what's underneath. So down here, if I just wipe that a little bit, there. There was something there I didn't want and now it's gone. Okay, so I'm going to go back to this hill here now with this dark brush. I want a few bits of contrast in there and I might actually do something else later, a little bit of blue, I'm not sure, we'll see. So here I've got a, a, a bunch of trees or something, a wood. Well, a bunch of trees is a wood, isn't it? Or is it a copse? Or is it a thicket? Who knows? Um, I'm just going to pull something up the hill a little bit because it's, it's a little flat. So I think I'll just sort of do some of that there which hopefully will connect it to the land below and it's this is one of these things where you just uh, you just have to trust yourself make marks don't be afraid if it does go wrong there's several things you can do first thing is don't worry second thing is don't throw the painting out the window and the third thing is wipe it off start again okay so that's sort of interesting-ish there step back have a look still not I still don't like that and um, of course the, what I should do is just be a little bit more decisive on it and I think I will just make it into one big shape I'm hoping that's working slightly better And if it doesn't look right, I'll just take it away. Actually, that looks acceptable now, I think. I'm going to add a bit of light just this side of it. 
just by doing that. You see, that becomes something. A bit of like catching the field. So if you go, if you stand in front of this painting and you, you put your nose on it and look for detail, you won't see it. These sort of paintings really need to be looked at from around about, I would think, f five to ten feet away. And, uh, and you get the true effect. A little bit of light above that tree there, that's quite nice. What I could do, um, something I always like to do is, as I often say, is give people somewhere else or various places to go in a painting. Rather than just say, look here or look here, I like them to look then and think, oh, ah, what's all this going on here? But, so in other words, keep the interest in. You just have to, you just have to play with your viewer. It is down to you whether they stay interested. So, here we go. Let's think what else we can do. I think I'll be on the sky in a second. I quite, I quite like what's going on down through here. Just make that a little lighter there, just take off some of that paint. Nothing in there yet. Breaks that a little bit. Sort of quite interesting there. And um, I think I'll put in some or will I? Maybe I won't. I bet you want to know what I was thinking. Okay, I'll tell you. I was thinking of putting some yellow in it, but um, I don't think I'll do that. Quite liking the way it looks now, and I think I'll get on. With, as I said, I keep saying things like this. I'll get on with the sky. I just want some light things going on over there because we've got this sort of illusion of detail here. I just want to get the same sort of effect on the hill. The more texture you can get into it, the more interesting it becomes. So just the odd spot or two and the odd line. I hope I'm not getting in the way too much here. Okay, are we happy with that? I'm talking to myself here, of course. Okay, I'm going to stop here and then I'm going to come back in a second and go on the sky. Okay. okay, the sky. Now, I'm going to do something a little bit different here. Um, this is a tube of paint I've had for quite a few years. Flesh tint. And um, if you paint portraits, I think it's one of the most useless colours you can ever have because actually I don't think anyone is that colour. So. Uh, but what I have found is that it's particularly good for skies, just for putting a tint of a colour underneath. So I've, I've, lately I've been using Japanese red and just making the skies quite red, actually. So uh, I'm going to do something a little different. So a little worm there of flesh tint, a bit of alkid. Quite a lot of alkyd. And uh, I was thinking, actually, of doing some yellow, but um, I don't think I'll bother. I might, I might, at a later stage, when everything's completely dry, but I know that if I add it now, I'll end up with a sky that's possibly a little bit too green. So this is a, this is a fan brush. And these are, these are quite, um, quite nifty, actually. There's various ways of using them. Uh, if you put white on it, and go up your painting like this and flutter around. I suppose you're fluttering doing that, so sort of fluttery movement. You'll get quite interesting clouds. And don't worry if you hit the thing accidentally, even at this stage, it doesn't matter. It's all fixable. So let's just uh, let's just add some of this colour here. As my usual technique, at this stage in a sky, I'm not trying to make anything perfect. The artist Salvador Dali said, um, don't bother trying to reach perfection. It's impossible. I think he was right too. 
um, just get the feeling, just the feeling of what you want. Put some of that right up to the edge of the land here. This is, um, there's been a bit of a break. Uh, this is the next day now. All the other work prior to this was done yesterday, and this is all, uh, which was Sunday, and this is Monday. So let's just put some of that on there and see what happens. I quite like that. And always remember go off the edge of the picture. If you stop a cloud here and here and here, it'll look as though the clouds have come along um, and posed for you. And uh, they won't do that. So take it off the edge. Much more real. Looks as though you've taken a snapshot of nature. Okay, so just a little hint of that colour, and I think you might agree, don't have to, of course, but uh, I've certainly seen clouds this colour, and uh, it's a, it just seems to go well with the white. It's got that slightly warm feel to it. Um, I've got lots of brush marks all over this at the moment. I don't know whether you'll be able to see them. You might, you might be able to. Uh, but it's it's uh, it's a lot rougher here than it looks here. So uh, I'll be going over it in a minute with a big brush just to even stuff out a bit. There we are. I might do something up here. Not sure yet. I might I might even lighten it just a little bit. In fact, let's do it. As they say, strike while the iron is hot. So I'm just going to put a few bits of pale blue in there. And still, I'm not worried about brush marks. They will go away. I don't mind the texture of the wood showing through a little bit. I quite like that. It uh, adds a bit more interest. Yeah, that's got a bit more, um, a bit more form to it. There is actually a hair here, but uh, I'm not going to worry about it. It's tiny. So a long, <clears throat> just a little bit of the uh, flesh tint, with less alkyd, so it's much stronger. I'm just going to put a few lines across there, just to see what it looks like. Slightly stronger colour just there. Doesn't take a lot. I'm not putting um, a pile of paint on here, this is quite thin. It's just a hint, a hint of the colour in there. Okay, now we're almost coming to the end. Although uh, when I when I've just when I've smoothed the sky out, I'm actually t uh, toying with the idea of putting a little bit of light green in the landscape, just the odd spot. We'll see how I feel in a minute. Okay, so I'm quite pleased with that. It's gone reasonably well. Just enough. You don't want to over. Don't like that. Uh, better. Okay, so. This brush, again, um, I'm going to keep the same brush, just give it a, a little bit of a wipe, just to take the edge off it. These brushes are, um, these are quite delicate, I've got through hundreds of these over the years. The thing with them, when you clean them, actually got a hair there, when you clean them, be particularly careful of the the hairs on the edge here once they go everything falls out like a deck of cards so don't be too rough with them just uh, 
treat them with a little bit of treat them with kid gloves as they say so I got a I've got some white already here on my palette from yesterday it's all quite dry and um, just just slightly more sticky than straight out the tube not too much I just want to put a few little bits along the edge of this brush not too much at all you can see that test the camera see hardly any and I'll show you what I was talking about earlier this thing where you flutter the brush he said, nearly dropping it. So I'm just sort of turning the brush as I go. I'm not painting contrails. Last thing I want. Somebody commented on my last upload and said, oh, contrails. Um, you can get skies that look like contrails, even though they're not. Maybe I'll just a sort of line across there. I think a few little bits in here. Just a little touch. Okay, so. And possibly a bit of really bright light over the top of the hill there. Again, I do that just to stop people going out the edge of the picture. It tends to you put a, a nice contrast in, and it drags the eye back. It's going to have a little bit over the horizon, just there. Could be a sign of good weather coming, or, or of course it could be a sign of a downpour. Depends on your point of view. Okay. Right. So, next stage. Almost the final stage. I'm going to get a big brush and uh, just do a quick bit of smoothing out. Um, this is a. It's not a massive brush. So I don't really need a giant one for this. Slightly bigger than the normal ones I've been using. This is. Uh, 10 centimeters or 100 millimeters it looks as though the brush has seen better days actually but it's never been used it's just a cheap brush the one that i used to start the painting with uh, is this size and that's uh, 70 millimeters or seven centimeters okay so i'm just going to skim this over what i've done just to just to sort of soften some of these lines down a bit and I'm, what i'm working on is quite dry as you can see there's no blue coming off at all but there is a solid lump of paint there that I don't want so I'm just gonna knock that off there okay so just a little bit of and another one I like this uh, stage of a painting, it's, um, especially when the paint is just a little bit sticky. It's like uh, it gives you that little extra bit of control. And I don't want it. I don't want it sort of streaming paint all over the place. Just uh, just a little bit of resist on it. Okay, sky is looking reasonably interesting. There we are. Okay, so I think I think that's it for the sky. I'm just going to move the camera again so that you can see the landscape, and then I'm going to just put in the odd fleck of bright green on the um, on the landscape. So here we go. This is um this colour is just called light green, really, which is. A pretty good description of what it is. It's um, light green, and uh, let me just turn my viewfinder around so that I can see what's going on here. Excuse the bumps. Okay. So 
Uh, I have to confess to a slightly bad edit here. I've already done some of this, and um, the camera, for some reason, didn't pick it up. So I'm going to enhance a few bits here. All it is is just picking out the odd spot where I think uh, a little bit of colour will actually help. So I've already put some here and I've put some either side of this tree. I'm going to extend that off over here a little bit and then add a bit of a little bit of scumbling in there. Not too much, it's just it's just a hint. It's a, a understated light spots. Just enough to make it interesting. I'm not trying to paint grass or shrubs. I'm, make, I'm making um, shapes that will hopefully conjure up that effect in the, in the mind of the viewer. And here you see I've got this, this light area here. This is sap green that's just been wiped when I painted the original. And um, it probably could do with a little bit of colour added to it. So let's just go for it. Let's just put a little bit there and possibly here as it approaches this bush in the foreground. It's okay. Um, here it stops. Now something is going on in there and I don't know what it is. I just put a few sort of marks on the board. So what I might do is just put a spot of that colour just there to reinforce the fact that there is something going behind that, uh, that tree or bush. So let's just put a little bit more just there. Just the odd spot. It doesn't take a lot. Okay. Now then, um, up here, I'm just doing. I'm just going to do a few little shapes. That hopefully, will give the impression of fields. Just a touch. Every now and then. So the thing is, when you do this sort of thing, don't go too far. Do a certain amount, step back, assess it, and as I always say, if it looks good, keep it. If it doesn't look good, wipe it. So this is, this is almost it for the painting. Um, so I'm going to be off in a second. I, I, hope you, I really hope you've stayed this long and I hope you've enjoyed it. But most of all, I hope you've learned something. There's always, hopefully, something in what I tell you that will uh, help you produce slightly more satisfying paintings and a bit of realism without getting bogged down in detail. If you like my paintings, if you like my channel, please don't hesitate to hit that subscribe button. Also the little bell icon next to it, so that you know when I next upload a video. Uh, I, I'm going to be teaching this year. I know some students are still coming. Some obviously have not been able to get here. And um, most of them ha have um, asked to be uh, held over till next year, which is fine. So if you want to come though, my website will be in the info box below. If you go to my website, go to the retreats page, which you can't miss. It's on the right hand side of the home page and you can find all the information about my retreats. If you want to come and have one to one lessons with me, um, you can contact me through Facebook or again, you can contact me through my website, the contacts page will get you uh, to my email and uh, I'll send you my info. So, uh, as I said, stay safe, look after yourselves and I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.